Stitch and Stuff. I'm Sarah. I'm Kim. We're glad you're joining today to talk about our stitching and other stuff. I'm like gas masks. At, I was going to look at what episode we are actually on. We haven't really announced that. Oh, I think we're on 72. 72? I think this wow. is episode 72. It's November 7th. Our gas mask. Did you want to clarify? <laughs> yeah. The gas mask in the back of the screen there. I don't know which direction it'll film right there <laughs> it's still sitting there from last week <laughs> my husband doesn't really want to go put it away poor poor my poor husband he's trying to paint baseboards to finish up the flooring but we don't have a garage so he's got to do it like under the cover and we have got this weather system coming through. it's like a storm blows through about every other every hour hour and a half it gets blowy rain he finally just gave up. He put the ones that he painted into the shed. Hopefully they'll dry. And I said, well, bring him into the mud room, honey. I have a little tiny mud room. He goes, these are like 20 feet long. <laughs> like that's really poking out into the dining room for a while. <laughs> well, he gave up. I think he's watching a movie now because well, there's just, it's gotten really dark again. I'm sure. Some days another... you just can't do it. Some days you just... The camp, if I paint, it just blisters all up. It just bubbles up when it's raining. Yeah. It's so too much. Someday... You're probably even in the air where you are. To even do it it's really yeah really humid or not humid but yeah it's very damp but it's gotten really dark so i'm sure it's going to start blowing in a minute and yeah it's, it's nice November. here but it's been pretty windy here yeah but, and rainy we've had like off and on stormy too but it's and a lot more rain than you used to sarah and i are on opposite sides of washington state if you're a new viewer yeah and she's in the desert area yeah so we've been getting some rain we usually do get a little bit of rain this time of year but we're in the Feels green. Nice and fallish. We're in the green western side, but yeah, this is our channel side. about cross stitch and clearly other stuff. <laughs> clearly other stuff. Weather. Normally Weather. we have my kids join us too, but they are not doing that today. I think two of them didn't really do anything, and then uh -huh. the one Millie, who usually has something to share, like always, just said, "Oh, I'll just show next week." I don't know how much she she had some knitting to do that she had done, but I don't know if she really cross stitched much this week well, that's we had like thing. halloween and yeah, that's busy. A church event thing that we went to so we've just had kind of a busy week yeah so she decided okay. she was just going to keep playing they're all set up with a whole house for their dolls in our basement they've all like got their own american bedrooms. girl dolls american girl dolls hmm. so they've set up their own bedrooms and their own wardrobes and their own <sighs> kitchen i don't know what they have all going on there but. you know what if they're playing nicely let it go playing nicely I I'm hearing it screaming. all afternoon that's nice it is kind of nice. It's nice when they can do that so yeah i can't believe it's november already we're headed into the cold it gets pretty cold here the yucky months yeah i was thinking yeah. of something oh i decided this is like totally off topic from cross stitching but i thought the other day i was thinking about when they were really little and i would make like sensory bins every couple months something different for them to play in and i thought I haven't done that for a long time. Uh -huh. I think I might do some of that again this year because then it's, and we can just like have one for like sort of seasonal. So uh -huh. I think we might make some fall scented. Well, my friend that I, so I'm in a home, homeschool co-op and she's running a preschool class and I <clears> help her, I'm the helper. And she made Play-Doh the other day with tea. Like you steep the water that you use to make the Play-Doh, you steep, you basically make tea and then make the Play-Doh oh. with the tea. And then you open up the tea bag and let the tea leaves also be in the play-doh and it smelled so good and i thought oh the girls would heard of that it probably came out of she's using kind of like a preschool um curriculum mm. a play type curriculum like um just black tea or like a scent well, i didn't ask her what kind of tea but it smelled just like chai or something it oh, just smelled kind of spicy. like spicy and i don't think it probably even matters what kind of tea you use you could probably use peppermint for christmas and have a peppermint yeah. scented so i think we might do that this week and just put together a little something different sensory bin and maybe in the winter do something different because they do the other day they said nah, this was what kind of made me start thinking about it Mom, do you remember when you used to just put like flour on a cookie sheet and you could just play in the flour when we were really little and I was like yeah they said can dry we do flour that? just dry flour can we do that I was like, yes <laughs> so they got out cookie sheets and I swear they played for like two hours with a tin you know like a baking sheet of flour they made shapes in it they felt i don't know they played for a long okay. time so they have imaginations those girls have imagination they, they can entertain themselves really that's all i could say well. 
So we're going to do some sensory bins, which is like strictly cross stitch. That's the other stuff. That's if I get too bright, should I turn that back off? Uh, I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention to what you were like before. Sorry, folks, but it's winter. We have to play the light game. Either way, it's fine. I'll leave it like this. Well, this? I have a yeah. full, I have a previous finish that I thought I could show. You said you do too, right? I do. Well, yeah, the one kind of a previous finish. Okay, well, I'll show mine, then you can show yours. Show we'll yours. Yours will be more exciting than mine. Well, I have um, filled this before, but it's been, oh, probably at least a year. So this is Cinnamon Stars, which so I love to pieces. And this one, I used some of the fancy flosses and some DMCs. So I kind of tried to choose. Obviously, this is a variegated floss. Uh -huh. And so some of the stones are and some aren't. Uh-huh. So pretty though. Some of the pumpkins are, but I just <coughs> kind of pick things that had big coverage. And yeah. I do love this one. So I've had that sitting on my piano this fall and I smile every time I look at it. You know, I was doing my long-term planning for next year and pulling out patterns. Mm -hmm. And that one, because you passed it to me, came up. But then I looked at it and I thought, it's, that's a really big house. It, yeah. It's not gonna make However, it. Appear. I think because the sections are unique, yeah. like this doesn't feel like normally when you're stitching a house, it's just a lot of, you know, like this, yeah. that was, I mean, this is a little bit tedious and, but the roof. they're just like a few sections though. It's not yeah. like one. I guess if you section it out. And so, and then this doesn't feel like a house at all because you're stitching cobblestone. Yeah, it is. It it's, a, it's, a, it's if I got to stitch a house, it is a pretty house to stitch. I don't know. Yeah. I just thought, oh, maybe I I'll love leave. this swirl, the stars. Who did? Who designed that? Is that? I think it's Plum Street. I think Plum it's Street. Plum Street Samplers. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's like my picture in the chart and it looks like mm -hmm. Plum Street. Looks in like one so that's my previous finish. That I thought, I don't think I've showed that one yet this year. And it's not particularly, it's just kind of yeah. polish, not Halloween. Well, my previous finish. put away my Halloween ones. You did? I suppose I should. Oh. My jack-o'-lantern ones, my spiders. Well, my previous finish was what I showed that I found in a, when I was looking for all my old stuff. Is oh, this, yeah. there, it's got a little glare. I've got glass on it. It's not really totally framed. <laughs> But I'm trying to go out in this there. white frame. It's like it's an almost fully finished. It's almost, but like there's a little mildew that I could not get out. Because oh, if you remember, right. it had gotten down, but I didn't know. I mean, I can't see it too much down here. Yeah, I can't but even see it on there. There is a mat, but the mat would cover up, it would come right along here. Oh. And I don't care if it covers this part up, I guess. So I might try it with the mat too, and it would cover some of this up and yeah. not so much white space. But then I was telling Sarah when we were talking beforehand that I kind of think I might want a red frame or a blue frame, Sarah said. I think red would look really good because you have so much of the red running through each. Yeah. Most of the months I'll have a little bit of red except for a couple. This kind of cracks me up because I'm so drawn to monthly and seasonal pieces. In fact, I just <laughs> ordered some from I ordered some couple things from one two three stitch that are did you just seasonal. drop your voice so that someone can't hear you say that uh -huh. did you just drop your voice so no one can hear you saying that from the oh, other room that I ordered yeah you're like I just ordered some yeah you can't hear me <laughs> I'm deaf anyway uh anyway so I, I, clearly I was drawn to those kind of patterns and didn't know it and I'm okay. gonna try to hang this above I got a little shelf over here because this is where I sit when I work so I might I don't know it's kind of nostalgic I told Sarah though it's so weird to know that I don't have any memory of working on this like I I have no idea what you don't even remember it. when you stitched it or anything you can't no remember. it had to have been 90s or, or early 2000s before I quit but I'm pretty sure it's it looks to me like a leisure arts pattern mm -hmm. that was kind of their style back then so anyway mm -hmm. I just thought, oh, I was doing some other finishing work that I'll show in a little bit. And I, I kind of threw this into the frame just to see. But I think I do want a colored frame. I think red will make the white, white stand yeah. out more. Yeah. Yeah. Red is good. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's cute. Um, so this week we do have a featured friend. And it's mm -hmm. Sheila Ueoka, who I think I'm still saying that right. Mm -hmm. And she sent an email. Well, she sent me an email. Yes. Okay. This was last Sunday, she actually sent it and asked if I had started my Hade, which I still have not this week. You'll see why this week when I show what I have been doing, but I'm planning to start it soon. 
I know I say don't that. Don't give up, Sheila. Don't I give will up. Start it. But we had kind of agreed in the comments to whatever video, maybe the week before that, that we would both start it. And I was going to start it, but I couldn't figure out where to start it because of some issues. I'm going to look at it again this week or next and figure it out. Somebody did leave you a comment, though, about how to figure that out last week. I know. And uh -huh. the issue that I'm having is that the diagram of how the pages are laid out doesn't go up high enough to actually include all of the pages that I have in the pattern. So like they hmm. gave a diagram of like one through 38, but I have 78 or something pages. Is there another flip through so, for another page? That's why I need to look at it more closely. I saw that comment. I can't remember who left that comment. Might've been Heather. No, it wasn't, I don't think, but I can't remember who. Or Julie. So I will look at it again this week and see if I can figure it out. Okay. Or if not this week, next week. But yeah. Sheila did start hers good for her she's feeding me but she said i'm sorry the dogs are starting to bark shh opal well, don't she said she did not have gridded fabric because she went cheap so i marked part of a grid using a friction pen and then pre-cut lengths of the first dozen or so colors put them on floss tag so i'll go ahead and actually insert the picture here so you know what i'm talking about before i start describing it Farewell to anger, to gorgeous. And she, okay, so she said that she set it up with the colors on some floss tags, getting the pattern set up in Pattern Keeper, luckily was fairly painless once I located <laughs> where I saved the PDF. Um, her, oh, her Instagram, in case anybody wants to follow her and keep track of her progress is Kimmy Stitches. It's K-I-M-I -I Stitches at Instagram. Mm -hmm. So you can see her progress pictures and cheer her on. She and got she a good knows. start on it. That I know. I mean, what is that? At least a hundred stitches. Yeah. And then she also, the last picture was her Oracle stitch along. Which is beautiful. Um, from the Oracle Sal group on Facebook. They have a free Christmas Sal going on now too, if you're interested. Oh. So go ahead and check out the Oracle Sal, Oracle Sal group on Facebook. I'm going to write that down and I'll go look it up after we're done. Oracle Sal. Facebook. I'm writing it down too. Ah. Christmas Sal sounds pretty. I love that um, sampler. Super yeah, cute. it's really pretty. Good job, Sheila. So thank you for sending those in. It's really yeah. fun to see your stitching and that farewell to anger is, is so gorgeous. Congrats on getting your start though. What a, Especially yeah, what without gridded fabric. I can't believe, I, I'm curious if she's going to, if you're going to keep gridding it as you go or. I know. I, yeah, I imagine. Uh -huh. you, yeah, let us know in the comments. Are you going to keep gridding it a little bit at a time as you go, or mm -hmm. will you do that? I will be using gridded fabric. And does that Ooh. friction marking must wear off after? It must a while. wash out or something. Or your stitching just covers it. Yeah, it I haven't solid. looked up what that pen is either, but I'm sure people have used that. Yeah. So thank wow. you for sending those. Yeah, cool. thank you, Sheila. And now I really do need to get started on mine. <laughs> Dude, you, dude. Promised. you promised. <laughs> we did go trick or treating last week, so that's what took up my week before was those costumes. Got those all done in time, which I think I had had done when we when we filmed last week. Mm -hmm. I think we yeah. rushed off so that we could carve pumpkins, which we did, and go trick or treating, which we did. Uh -huh. We went to a neighborhood that's kind of known for being a good neighborhood to trick or treat, but oh my gosh, there were hundreds of people walking this neighborhood street, mainly the main street through the neighborhood. Uh -huh. It was insane. And many of the houses were very, very decked out. Yeah. Some of them were kind of scary, but some of them weren't too bad. Mm -hmm. But we were finally like, let's just 
walk up that street and trick or treat a little bit as we go. But some of the houses had like lines to get up to the door to trick or treat at. And we were like, no, okay, this is a little much. So we actually just walked up and over a couple streets, like just same neighborhood, but just like right. over a block or two. Outside street. There was nobody there, but there were still lots of houses that had decorations or lights oh. on or whatever. So we were able to just trick or treat, same neighborhood, just but way more pleasant experience if we weren't too worried about getting the like. Yeah. Stand in line. Really crazy. Yeah. That was crazy. But we crazy. had fun anyway. Okay. So did you see going around this last week? There I I follow an Instagram account called Spread the Love or Spread the okay. Love Movement, something like that. And just type in spread the love and it'll and they just post inspirational things. Mm -hmm. And they posted a, a video last week of a little boy so it was captured on a ring camera outside somebody's home oh, uh -huh. they had just put did you see this no they had uh, uh -huh. put candy out for trick-or-treaters right and they obviously weren't answering the door maybe they weren't home i don't know but they captured on the ring camera this little boy you could see his parents on the sidewalk it was quite a long walk up he trudges on up to the door he sees the bowl of candy and he tips it and it's empty uh -huh. but he hears little kids coming and so he looked in his bag and he quit took candy out of his bag put it in there put in the bowl kids. for the other little kids. When I told your dad that we were driving, he's like, I started to tell him, he goes, I know where this is going. Oh no, I know where this is going. It's <laughs> like almost got tears in his eyes. But it was the sweetest thing ever. Oh and it wasn't like somebody commented. It wasn't like he picked out some, he literally just scooped some out. It could have been some of his favorite candy he gave away. You know, people were like commenting well somebody is raising this kid right you know there are good people out in the world and there that's are good so kids sweet. out in the world but oh so sweet that's so sweet you know he's probably like eight yeah. or nine I mean he wasn't very old he wasn't real little but yeah I thought that was sweet so oh. I'm glad you were successful and didn't have to wait in line it was fun it felt like a very traditional kind of experience uh -huh. other than the mass massive crowds yeah. so normally they close down at least that main street or one of the streets really oh. but they haven't the last couple of years ostensibly because they're kind of trying to discourage people from trick-or-treating trick there because of covid and i was like come on people are going to trick-or-treat whether covid is here or not like people trick-or-treated last year yeah and not they should have probably closed down the street so it would have been safer because we're like yeah. driving at a snail's pace to make sure no kids run in front of our car because they were just it's just a narrow little neighborhood yeah, little yeah it's a narrow yeah everywhere so we finally just found a little spot pulled off and parked and then walked yeah around but our favorite house do you want to come millie actually is going to show she decided oh. do you want to talk about our favorite decoration house that was kind of fun favorite. yeah there was like one that was set up so it looked like a quidditch field like a what a quidditch field quidditch all from harry potter yeah, like the rings like stuck like some yeah. made them and stuck them in the ground like one half of the yard was a quidditch field and the other half was like the graveyard from the fourth book oh where harry where voldemort comes back yes and oh. the, by the time we got there so we parked and we went up to the other part of the neighborhood and thought it doesn't matter we'll just we just enjoyed the decorations as we drove yeah and when we were coming back almost all those houses were out of candy because that's the other thing when you have that many people trick-or-treating those poor houses have to like have a ton of candy so a lot of them had run out and were just shut everything off and we're done right. yeah so we were in the right amount of time like if we had gone any later we wouldn't have even probably seen some of those but the Harry Potter house was still lit up, but the guy was standing out there and he goes, I'm so sorry, I'm all out of candy. And we were like, that's okay. We just were walking down here because we wanted to see the house. Because oh. girls had said, can we go see? The so Harry he Potter said house. he had gone to, is it Universal Studios that has a Hogwarts? Yeah. They had gone there and he said, it really encouraged me to up my game or something like that. <laughs> so he had like a couple owls up in the window, like they were up in the owlery and he had, yeah, like a big gravestone, like a big cardboard or something head uh -huh. like headstone statue and i'm fun. trying to it was fun that was our favorite yeah that's your favorite one so that was okay. okay what are you showing this week well I'm first i guess we're showing her doll okay that's her doll. doll did you make her that bag is that what you were saying yes i made her and a little handicrafted purse okay yes i see she's got a water mm -hmm. bottle a little felt uh-huh ribbon Cute. in the you get the ribbon? very handy oh. I think something was ribbon from somewhere when I had. Oh, from yours? Um, Not my ribbon. You didn't go digging in my ribbon. 
Okay. Did you press stitch this week too? I wasn't sure I if you did. press stitched me. But you did a lot of knitting, I, I can't think. remember what I did. I was trying She's Motivated to... to get her leg warmers done. She is motivated to get her leg warmers uh -huh. done. Here, we'll pop it through. There we go. You're in the middle of a row, but. Yeah, I'm always like. Oh, yep. Yeah. I can see you've done some more pink. Good yeah. job. Enough, enough. We have to probably decide how much pink. Yeah, do. I'm thinking you're probably going to have to put some white in there because you only we have, have that one skein of white, pink, right? Or a couple stripes of white and pink or something. We only have that one skein of the pink. Yeah. Okay. Well, how much farther does she have? You have to measure her leg and see how I much know, farther. I know we need to measure. Go. I think she wants them kind of long, like mm -hmm. a little bit of back stitching. Yeah, because that's all you've got left, right, on your piece. Yeah. So I'm looking at this one princess. Uh huh. This one princess. Uh huh. On the back stitching. Gorgeous. The flowers. Are you having a hard time being motivated to do all that back stitching? Because it's all the same. No. Sometimes I have a hard time, like, motivated to do things that are always the same. So you've been working up here a little bit more. Not have too much more to go. Oh, you started back down at the bottom now. No, I started at the top and then. Again. You're walk. You're working down that way. <laughs> yeah. So how? Well, that'll go fast. Just gotta keep. Super pretty. Yeah. Do you have a snack? Yeah, you can have a snack. Good job. Good job, Millie. I love you. Thanks okay. for sharing. <laughs> Wait, don't put it there because I'm gonna. All right. Well, well, do you have any finished objects? No. <laughs> I have. I I do. Let's see your finished objects. Fancy, okay. fancy so, pants. Uh, my fancy pants. Uh oh, I'm just gonna quick bring this over here. I'm okay. trying to up my dough bowl game here. Oh, you want to see what she worked on? Okay, I took out most of my Halloween and I finished some of my fallish ones. And I'll. This is my dough bowl. I had a little pumpkin in the back. So cute. Oh, so I'll I'll show you which ones I did. I, I left bobbing for pumpkins in there, but I think when I have more Thanksgiving ones. So we gave this pattern away a long time ago. It's yeah. That little tiny bent creek turkey. I mean, good grief. I think I won that too from Carolyn Zook. I and think I you have did. it in my stash. And I have it. I, I, I was doing this really late at night and I kind of screwed this up, but it's okay. I wanted more of the green to show on uh, the side. This is uh, so tiny. I mean, if you look at my hand, it's tiny. Uh -huh. But um, oh, I kind of looked on Instagram um, at different people's dough bowls. Uh, Yvonne from Night Owl Stitcher, she's the first person I ever saw that did a dough bowl. And so I was looking at some of her finishes and she does little buttons and stuff. So I thought, okay, Cute. I'm going to do that. So I finished that one. And this was another turkey that I, I haven't done the before. Can you put the dogs outside? This was part of a bigger scene. It had thank you and it had a little house yeah. or a tree. Is that a Lindy and, Stitches? No, it's not. Oh. But it was in a primitive, it was in a punch needle primitive stitcher oh. magazine a couple years ago. So I just thought, okay, I'm just going to, I just wanted the turkey. So I just stitched the turkey and just dug around in my button thing and found some buttons. Again, this was like at 11 o'clock at night. Um, and then I turned my little funny Aww. mama bunny and her little raking friends into a pillow no one hanging from the tree <laughs> no, I that's my her. girls right there no aren't they cute <laughs> anyway did that one and then the last one i and then this one i had already done this one i had up for how long oh, yeah. but i finished stitching this one they are? and finished it all in the same week wow oh that's right you just started that yeah, the little toadstool. Oh, so I didn't do the words November. I just thought I'm done. Oh yeah, yeah, but you don't need I it. Like, it just looks fallish. So that's that was really exciting. I feel like I wanted. A so that's been a goal for you for a long time. So you had all uh, those cute ones really close, and then I did, and then they've just been sitting there, and I thought, okay, it's time to do something with these. Cute. Uh, so yes, I did. and I was gonna have a snack. I don't good. care what you have. And I'm not again bona fide. They're not great. I mean, they're not perfect, but they're. I, re I like doing pillows way more than I like doing a flat fold. Flat folds. I did one flat fold with her tutorial and it's turned out great. Yeah. But holy good. moly, was it a lot of work. There's a lot of steps and pieces the way she does it. And I just don't have the mental Much. space for that. Yeah. So those, are, those, and then I put that one in the frame, but those are almost finished. I just got to get the felt on the backs of them. Right, I'm doing this. 
So sorry, anyway. I have girls asking to make popcorn right oh. here. No, you can't make popcorn right now. No, you can have crackers or string cheese or go gurt. Or I don't know. Okay. Well, those look great. <laughs> I don't have any finishes. But good job, you. <laughs> Well, I didn't for a while. I will hopefully next week. Yeah. Well, I'll just show what I work on. Okay, so remember last week I was describing the thing about exchanging the art pieces. Mm -hmm. So I um, had designed, I had written a poem and I was saying, I'll just say it again in case somebody didn't watch last week or whatever. So I'm participating in this basically art exchange and I'll just tell it briefly. So I have a partner that I'm creating something and sending it to and they'll add or modify it or make something inspired by it and then I'm receiving something from somebody and I'll add or modify or do something inspired by it so what you I ended up that one and you I get to send that off okay and the person I send it off to um oh I just realized it's on the printer so one second just really one second okay don't mind me just drinking my Russian tea I have a cold again, the cold that I had two weeks ago. I still have it, just in case you guys were wondering. Yeah, and Rosie has a little cold. That's why she- Yeah, she looked through. kind of grumpy when she came up the stairs a minute ago. She's kind she of a little, a little- She's having a lot of like sniffly nose and a little- Yeah, there's, and, and she's got what I've got. There's just a lot of pressure in your head. It's not yeah. like a sinus infection. There's just a lot of pressure, but- Pressure. So Sudafed does help. Do you have children Sudafed? No, I gave her some- ibuprofen to help just her feel yeah. a little better and jesse gave her some nasal spray that we had some kids like yeah. nasal spray but she's just kind of droopy i think kind of a super cold i think that's going around no i think yeah Liddy had something going on and but i wasn't sure if it was just allergies or a cold because it kind of was coming and going it was kind of like kind yeah. of an allergies I mean, allergy literally i think last wednesday i was like oh i don't need to take any more aspirin before bed and then friday Friday, I woke up just feeling snotty and snuffy again. Yeah. So Rosie has been mm. a little bit. Under the weather. Okay. So what I decided to do for the person I'm sending to, I think I, I can't remember if I showed or just, there wasn't really anything to show. You didn't show anything last week. I think you just talked I think about I just it. talked about that as my plans. So what I had decided to do, I have these panels of, okay. that's just a thread attached to it, just Ada on some wooden frames. And I decided I was going to write a poem to put on each of these on the side. I'm going to have them like. Uh, We're going to hinge them together. And I'm going to hinge them all together. But there's a third panel in the middle. And my um, my poem is kind of inspired or connected to Psalm 1, which is about. So the psalm is about a man who follows the way of the Lord, basically. And he is like a tree planted beside streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither in all he does, he prospers. So I wrote this poem and then I rewrote it and then I rewrote it and I cut a bunch, like I kept cutting it down because it has to fit. Those aren't very big. I thought they were gonna be bigger. Canvas. So I'm backstitching yeah. probably tonight. I'm, I'm trying to decide what color to backstitch it on. Oh, and so the tree, Millie actually drew me this tree, which was so great. She's such a, great little artist I said would you dr draw me a tree and would you just have a couple of the branches <laughs> could you have a couple of the branches go onto the side panels <laughs> let's talk it again <laughs> so I'm going to hinge these together so it'll be like a trifle but that's what it'll oh. hang on they're still not right <laughs> Millie drew it. She wants me to make sure. We all know Millie drew them. Okay. Millie drew them. Okay. So here they are. This is what it'll <laughs> maybe like that. Okay. Gotcha. So a couple branches and then the poem will be on the side. The poem, here's the work, the actual stitching I'm doing. So I decided to do couching, some couching. So that's the main thing I'm doing, which if you're not familiar with couching, you can just Google it. But Basically, you lay a thread down and then you go around it with the next stitch. So you go up and then over it and up and over it. So like you're a satin making... stitch over a thread, basically. Basically, so yeah. Cool. So some of them are a little sloppy, but they'll be filled in a little bit more. Yeah, it's cool looking. It is cool. And I'm doing some just back stitching too. Mm -hmm. 
for a little speed uh -huh. partly and partly because I actually do really like the look of the varied uh -huh. the back stitching kind of running along yeah. through it. so then the poem I'll just read it. it says I am like a tree taproot fed uncurling hope into dark tiny tendrils bringing forth life that's one panel and then the other panel will say I drink from many waters my vines stretch my fruits grow succulent, my leaves bud for healing, Selah. And so that will all fit in basically a 70 by 70 square. It'll, yeah, 70 to okay. 70. Uh -huh. So it'll fill, and I'm just going to backstitch it, which that'll go pretty fast. But yeah. I'm not sure what color to do it. That's where I, I was going to start that this afternoon, but I was really just stumped. I was leaning towards maybe a green to sort uh -huh. of signify the green of life and growth yeah but yeah give it a little more color yeah i still cannot find my little bag of fancy flosses anywhere because that's what i really wish i was doing was a green that i have Tara, they gotta be somewhere around there. you would think they would be with all of my stitching stuff right i've looked through it and through it and through it so have you gotten your thing that <clears throat> Not yet. She was running a little behind. I'm running a little behind. I can, well, you know, when you're handcrafting things, sometimes it takes a little longer. Yep. Yeah. And this tree is taking a little longer than I, well, and I just haven't had quite as much time to work on it as I would have liked, but I think I'll get it done Monday or Tuesday if I work on it tonight. Well, what do you think the person's going to do to it that you're sending it to? I'm not sure. It's, she does several different things but one of the oh. things she does is like wire and bead work so oh, that's right she was the wire and like that she also does some painting and photography and so lots of right lots of variety yeah but she knows what i'm doing like i've uh -huh. the only other thing i did was stitch a little bit more or knit yeah. a little bit more on millie's sweater uh-huh just kind of straight still knit. love it straight i do love it oh so nice yeah everything I worked on this week. Everything. I really did just work pretty much monogamously on that tree because I'm trying to get it done. Trying to get it done. Yeah. Well, I worked on a few things. So I had started, um, I guess I could show, I mean, this is the front page. It's kind of the graph, but it was that thankful. Oh yeah. By, by Emily Call, salt and pepper stitching. And last week I had just only, I think, almost the words all done. So you I see finished. her Christmassy ones, by huh? the way. Did you see her Christmassy ones that came out this week? The nativity one? There's a nativity one, but I thought she had another one. Oh, Maybe. I don't know. I might have missed that one. Snowman. Did you see the snowman? Oh, yes. It's gorgeous. You guys, if you're not following her, you need to follow her. Yeah. She's really, a, she just has cute little design. This is I think she's a pretty new designer. I don't think. I, I exactly. Think she, she is new. Her stuff is adorable. This is a lot more work than I thought it was going to be because there's a lot of so little work. Huh? You've gotten so far. I, I basically finished the letters. I did these and I did all of this. It's really cute. It is cute. And there's just a big pumpkin here and there's a star. I mean, there's, there's oh. some bigger motifs. There's a few little things up here, but I'm just going to keep plodding along on it, but I do love it. It's really nice. Um, and this is just scrap scrappy blue fabric that I had because mm -hmm. big chunk cutting up <laughs> but that's the nice thing about some of these smaller projects that you you know you can use up some of these and I do like stitching on blue fabric I don't know what it is blue fabric kind of is my jam I think um so I worked on that actually uh, quite a bit last night I worked on that and I worked on oh, joyful world like November I'm I'm kind of well no I did I basically did this side this so it's the peacock oh that's right the free pattern so that's why I'm showing it um my snowflower diaries I'm kept up all year I'm so proud of myself so the peacock will be over here but all of her designs all these blocks have flowers up the sides so mm -hmm. I need to get cracking on that because I think that little peacock's going to take me a little bit of time yeah kind of a lot um, of stitching compared so, to some of the other motifs huh kind of a lot of stitching compared to some of the yeah. other motifs. yeah I mean it's a block but it's you know nice 
same amount of colors. I think, um, hold on a minute. I did work on something else, but I pushed it together with some of my other plans to talk to you about. It must be in here. It is in here. So somebody had sweetly sent us this pattern with some other patterns last year. And I was going to start it and I never did, but it's Lizzie Kate's Not a Creature Was Stirring. Oh yeah, I love that one. <laughs> I'm going to have to get like, there's like a little bell. Uh -huh. I I can order it. that. You could order them probably or just get some. Yeah, or I think my thread needle street has a whole, remember all her buttons and stuff. That's right. So That's right. I had planned to start this last year and didn't. And I had dyed some fabric, um, kind of a dark gray. This is a really pathetic start, but I did start it. <laughs> <laughs> first hat. starting with this guy yeah this one the one on the left yeah this one it's green you can't oh yeah see. well green and red i just started with the green but yeah oh i know what else i worked on it was also on black fabric it's also a sad story <laughs> so last week i had talked about how candy from the 614 stitcher, we're going to start our flea market flower sal. And if you're not familiar, that is a fat quarter shop, Lori Holtz pattern. But I thought I would do mine on black. So I, <laughs> I don't know why I decided to do that. But I had gotten a 36 count black. <laughs> And that's where I started, and I am not a happy camper because that's with one. What's, over. This is one strand over two on the thirty-six count, and it is not popping enough. It's too too much black is showing through mm -hmm. the lighter colors. So I tried it twice. I started. I did a couple stitches in the very beginning up here with two strands, and thought, nope, I'm not going to work. So then I went down to one, and I did this much one evening, and I'm like, nope, I just don't mm -hmm. think. I'm going to like that. Mm -hmm. So I went back and tried it again with two strands and I got maybe one petal done and I, I hated it. My mm -hmm. stitches looked really messy. They're really bunchy. Clearly on 36 count, I need to be a one strand stitcher, but this kind of pattern, I just want it to be a little bolder. So I did go <clears throat> on Thursday and Friday and get a 32 count black. So I'm going to restart it tonight. With two strands? Uh huh? With the two strands. With the two strands, yeah. And interestingly enough, Candy started hers on a linen. What was it? An even weave? I can't remember which. And she, we were on Facebook talking about it. She said she did not like her fabric either. She said it felt like she was stitching on gauze. Oh. She was going to have to order something different. So I think that's really about all I worked on, which is actually not very much, but I didn't stitch at all. Friday, mm -hmm. I was out doing errands, and then um, I spent the evening filming, finishing those pillows. Oh yeah. And then yesterday, I yesterday baby Junie was here, and I sewed up the backs. So I spent some time in the morning sewed up the backs of my pillows with those lovely sutures. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know. Evening got busy, but I did stitch a little bit on thankful last night so mm -hmm. yeah not a lot i knit a little tiny bit when i was um on my lunch break a couple days but it's not enough to really i want to have more done yeah um but i did work i so i did also one afternoon i posted on instagram a picture i pulled all my stuff out to kind of put stuff away i've got bins that just have no lids stuff just shoved in them and i thought these need to get put away in my pattern you know, like haul and stuff. And so when I did that, I found some things that I need to spend some, give some attention. <laughs> so I told Sarah before we started recording that I did a wheel. And so I pulled out some things from last year, winter's piece. Oh yeah. Some things that are not that far off from being done. And so we've talked a lot about this recently about just making a concerted effort to getting some of these done. So I did make a wheel and put some of these things on it. Oops, you muted yourself. 
Try hitting the space bar. What does that do? I wonder if you bumped the space bar, if that mutes you. I did. Um, do you see what I see? I started last year. Oh. I'm really close. I mean, I have some ground to do in a deer. So these are things that I'm going to, I spun my wheel this week to work on um, at least one hour, and then I can work on anything else. And then I also had shown this previously. It was a free pattern, and actually I was reading on it. It was a free pattern from my stitching shop from Lavender and Lace from 2000. Oh, yeah. She always, and so oh. it's this beautiful little angel. And I, can you put something behind it so we can really see? Yeah, let's see. I feel like the light is showing through a lot on that one. Does that help? Yeah, that's better. Now I can see it. Oh. My little angel girl. You got so much done on that. All I have is some pearl beads to do around here and along in here. And I thought I had the beads because there's the gold beads are in the bag. Mm. But the ones I have are tiny, clear ones, and I think they're too small to show up. So mm. she was supposed to get worked on this week, but I'm going to order some pearl beads. But she's, I, yeah, she's gorgeous. And I thought, I need to get that done. Yeah, that's so pretty. <laughs> and they, I was reading, they said, this design is dedicated to Judy Swahola, a sharing, caring mm. woman who worked so tirelessly stitching for others. She lost her battle with cancer mm. on 5 2000 She was a member of the Angel Afghan project. Mm. When you put the last stitch in, your angel said to kiss to Judy, she'll be smiling. Oh. So anyway, she's mm. gorgeous. I need to just get it done. So I need to stay to get the beads. So I guess I've kind of moved into future plans, but part of what I did this week was look through all these patterns and find these things that just need to have a little extra push. Yeah. And also, the other one that I found that I've worked on, and I've shown this before, I don't have a good color picture. It's Autumn Leaves, and I started it for Magazine Monthly last year in November. That's right. And the poem is Whirling, Twirling, Copper and Brown, Scarlet and Gold, They Blanket the Ground. And, it, you know, I love fall, so this just had to be stitched. But this is where I'm at. It's there is quite a bit of stitching on this because I mm -hmm. clearly there's a border. There's little houses, which I actually love. There's little houses down here. Those are all little houses. <laughs> They're cute. But this tree uh, is no joke. Uh -huh. I've got half the tree and that bigger bird, but the words won't take long. Yeah, and the leaves. So anyway, and there's a little house here too, a little white house. So I want to work on this. Mm -hmm. See it. Oh, off to the I'll side there. Yeah. And this is done with um, mostly um, fancy floss. So there'll be some variegation. Anyway, so those are, so I did spin. And then the other thing, okay, the other thing that I made it on my wheel, I didn't start this for Jolly July, but I really wanted to. It was out of that book, that Christmas book. Um, oh, yeah. I don't have a good, oh, I do. It's the little kids with the Christmas tree. Yeah, that's so cute. And I have it all kitted up and I have fabric for it. So I'm going to start it because I don't like to stitch Christmas. <laughs> Remember? You have no use for Christmas stitching. I use for Christmas, but it calls to me. So this week, actually, oh, I lost my plan. I must have stuck it in that. All of those are going to get worked on, I think, a little bit, except for the beaded angel girl. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, um, oh, Magazine Monthly. Yeah. Be the growth talking. Yeah. So my Magazine Monthly, the, the, the theme is home. Home is where the heart is. Where the heart is. So I haven't started it yet, but this is what the piece that I chose. Thankful heart, because thankful for my home and my family. So I really loved this piece when I saw it. It's all just DMC. So I went and got the fabric for that on Friday. So I'm going to start that. And then the cross stick is home. So I'm going to do Dreaming Girl because there's houses on it for H. Hmm. Joyful World with O because there's O's and Joyful and World. M is my Mary and Bright by Pineberry Lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And E 
it was going to be the blue flower acorn one because uh, mm -hmm. the quote talks about um is by the the quote on that a uh, thousand oaks or whatever that Make quote mm -hmm. is from well ralph waldo emerson but i actually am going to do joyful world for elegant bird because it's a elegant bird for e that was candy's idea because oh, it is a peacock so yeah. those are those are going to get worked on this week and I also bought fabric to kit up this and I really want to do this because I'm apparently I'm a seasonal stitcher now because now I'm into Thanksgiving and just things you know we change as we grow and gather I love it mm -hmm. although I'm not always a fan of the white 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 skin I know that's kind of the prim look uh-huh but I think I'm going to give her more of a flesh tone you mean a white person flesh tone yeah, white person, white person <laughs> a peachy color, maybe. I don't know. I'm not too, too peachy, just a little bit of color. She yeah. just looks kind of like a ghost. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not super into that really, really pale skin. Yeah. Like, yeah. But, like, just like white. Yeah, like it's just dark. EMC white or whatever. Yeah. I think this one uses parchment. Oh, yeah. And it's, and I, there's another pattern that I started this last year that also had that very stark white. Mm. Um, I think it's just a prim look, but she just needs a little bit of color in her cheeks. I'm sorry. I need to just say, since we're talking about skin color, um, something I've noticed about my girls, yeah. I don't really like to talk about them when they're coming up. Um, when they're coloring, like people, they always color them with brown skin and I love it. I think it's so cute and I'll be like, what color, you know, what color are you going to use for this or whatever? And they always color them like with brown skin. It's not even something they think about. It kind of cracks me up because like, I don't, I don't know how or what, like, it's not something I specifically taught. I just let it be. But yeah. anyway, I just think it's so cute. That's interesting. Representation matters. <laughs> yes, so. yes, so. There is somebody on yeah. Instagram. I don't think it's, I don't think. I wish I could remember who it was, but it is an African-American stitcher uh -huh. and she did on her Instagram grid. I wish I could remember who it was now. All this, all these skin tone oh. glosses for darker skin, like oh, pretty light browns and all the way up the spectrum. And I thought, what, that is really kind of cool because yeah, sometimes you're looking at all those colors and you're like, what color? I just go for a peachy color because I'm just a peachy colored person, but yeah. I mean, um, we do what we, what, yeah, images ourselves often. Right, right. But I do but, love that yeah. when, like, we can image something different from ourselves and right. normalize that as well. So, yeah. and I thought, well, what a handy tool that is, especially yeah. because I think, in general, I think cross stitching is viewed as kind of a, a kind of a white person craft, but it's not really. I mean, there, there's a lot of, um other ethnicities that that cross stitch that maybe aren't represented it aren't represented in patterns but that's the joy of cross stitching is you can choose any colors you want to do but i thought what a cool thing to have for somebody that's looking and rather than yeah, have to go through i all would love to see that yeah, so I you think of who that was if you remember I I'll try no, and i can like link to their account in case yeah. anybody here is interested because i would love to know. i know i wonder candy i wonder if you saw it too it was somebody that I follow, but I don't think it was the soulful stitcher. It might have been the soulful stitcher. I'll try to find it. Anyway, it was cool. I, I really thought it was a cool thing to have. And it's funny about the girls, but you know. Yeah. I think it's just. It, well, but think about, you know, they are living in an area where you've got. Yeah, we live in an area where. A lot of brown people. A lot of white writers. and a lot of brown people. And yeah, that's good. So that's just normal to them. Yeah. But it's yeah. just really funny to me. Yeah. I've never noticed. Well, I don't think I've ever, I haven't seen them color people for a long time. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, often like, they're just coloring flowers and Bible verse or whatever, yeah, but yeah. I just, I notice it every time, yeah. you know, if they're, we're at church and they have like a coloring sheet with the characters, or even if it's not, even if it's just like uh -huh. a modern looking person and there's a Bible yeah. verse around them, always brown. Different shades of brown, not like always right. certain. But you know, it's probably even more satisfying because it shows up better. And it always looks super pretty. They yeah. have to have very dark hair. 
and brown I mean, skin. And if you're if you're coloring on a piece of white paper and you're just making a light, <laughs> we're so bland and boring. <laughs> peach. I do peach. You always have to use peach for skin. <laughs> Peachy skin. Well, didn't this get anyway? Just yeah. Well, I have what's your, what's your plans? So I right before I started filming, I decided to fill out my magazine monthly <laughs> challenge as I was sitting here. But look, I decorated it up all cute. Let's see. Mine isn't written up. This is what mine's written on. This is mine right here. <laughs> oh, I'm winning. I'm winning. I'm winning. I gotta do mine. But I decided, so you know me and like I don't have a ton of magazine starts and I don't really want to start. And I also don't even have a ton of magazines. It's not something I buy a lot of. I know. So you don't want to do a bunch of magazine stars because magazines aren't your jam. Well, I just I like them. You don't have a lot. I just don't have a lot. I don't really, yeah. It's not like I have a huge stash of magazines that I really should be working through. That's you. So. Do you want a magazine subscription for Christmas at all? I'd probably love one. I'd have to think about which one. Like punch needle and primitive stitcher or yeah. You have to think about that. A lot of theirs. Yeah. That's my oh, favorite. Now. I probably like that one. Because they have a lot of really cute ones in it. They do. And they're yeah it's a nice magazine anyway okay so because of that though i decided yeah. to pick my i'll just show what i'm gonna work on yeah I decided you're not doing the theme around. you're just doing the acrostic well i am doing a theme but i'm not oh. picking it out of a i'm breaking oh. the rules but i've been assured time and time again that it's okay to break the rules on this because okay. it's just for fun uh -huh. so i decided i was going to pick a whip that i already have and i mean technically i am stitching out of a book so it's not a magazine. Yeah, I think. But it's a book too. of stuff that. So anyway, so I'm going to work on this. My goal is I would love to get this finished, but uh -huh. I just decided to pick three hours. That's going to be my sort of focus piece that I really would uh -huh. love to do. I am actually pretty close to getting it done because he's the bottom. Oh, he is? I think that kid on the sled. Let me double check that before I say that. There might be a border. Or like a. Oh, there's. An, oh, no, you're right. He's not quite the bottom. So, but basically I have all of this stitched. Yeah. From here up, basically. That's what so I really just have this stuff to do. Yeah, the ground. I might not finish it this month. That's okay, but I'm going to try to work on it for three hours. That's fine. Yeah. I don't think I'll get it done in three. If I work oh. on it more than three, that's great too. Well, as I was going to say, you might get going on it and just decide I'm going to keep working on it. I do really like working on this one. I could probably work fairly monotonously on that and be pretty happy. And so then the acrostic is the word home. So I picked my heartstrings samplery for my Bascornu uh -huh. to work on. So here's so our- close to being done. It is. So my goal on this one is to finish the backside. There's the front. Uh-huh. And here's where I'm at with the back. Let me grab that needle before it disappears. Um, this is where I'm at with the back. So I could get that done this month. Yeah. I really could. So that is what I wrote down as my goal is to finish the back side of that. Uh-huh. Can you grab that for me, sweetie? Yeah. So that's my H, my yellow. Uh-huh. O is my cranberry and pine stocking because there's an O in stocking. Uh-huh. I'm not going to show the pattern. I'll just show where. Yeah. Where I'm at now. It's a lot of trees. A lot of trees. I haven't worked on it this week, so I have. It hasn't really changed since last yeah. week. But my goal on that is to get 20 trees done. Okay. This month. That'll be a chunk. Oh. M is something you passed to me. Oh. And it That's is a um, a start that you had done, but decided you weren't going to finish. Oh, Mary one. Nice. So M is going to be Mary one. I do love her little Christmassy. It is. So I'll show where you had it at. And I gave it to you because I don't stitch Christmas. <laughs> I know I'm never going to really stitch this Christmassy one. So I'm going to try and work three hours on this guy. Did I give you the flosses for it too? Yeah, everything. The yeah. whole thing is all kitted up in a little bag. There you go. Don't say I never gave you anything. I don't think I've ever said that. You give me a lot of things. <laughs> As my mom used to say that to me. You, give, you give a lot of things my mom used to always say that to me don't say i never gave you anything <laughs> i can hear her voice say that as you say my e is going to be gathering eggs i almost chose that for mine but she's just too springy and i'm a christmas well, thanksgiving stitcher right now i just really right wanted now. to get her I know. <laughs> your christmas stitcher all of a sudden 
I figured I should work on her for a few hours. So three hours is my goal on her because I want. Oh, she's so close to steady progress on her. Yeah. Yes. My goals for the month, and my plan is to probably just work. Well, my plan is to finish the tree and the poem. And yeah, stuff. you got to get that, that done. So that's my main priority this week. But I'm hoping to work a little bit on at least two of the other things. On yeah. Months. I mean, even if you gave yourself just a half hour to take a break from the tree. Yeah, I think I need to do that because I'm kind of burning out a little bit on working on that tree. So I think if I just worked on something yeah. for a little while, and then I'm also really want to finish the, at least the, this is unrealistic because with all the stitching I need to do, I'm probably not going to finish the length of the bodice from Millie's sweater, but I'd love to. Yeah. That's probably not realistic though. So, well, it could be. I do knit sometimes during school, like during math yeah. lessons or whatever, if they're working on a worksheet, yeah. I just need to be on hand. I pull it out. And I totally it. would have knit back then. Yeah. I mean, if I had knit back then, I totally would have knit while you guys were doing school because you can just sit there mm -hmm. and help out and just, especially if it's an easy pattern, you're just knit, 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 knit. Right now I'm just doing yeah. knitting and purling back and forth. So. Well, and you're on the, you're on the road. Do you ever just take it with you or you're usually mm -hmm. doing errands? Knit so during like, ballet sometimes. Yeah. I'll pull it out if I have a little bit of time in the ballet yeah. or if Jesse's driving us somewhere, I usually do knitting then and rather, unless yeah. it's a road trip. Otherwise I just bring my knitting right now. Yeah. So we have a giveaway winner from last week. We do. And she- oh, Did you have Hall? I kind of skipped over Hall because I don't have any, but do you have some? I know you went- I don't really, other than the fabric and the okay. floss that I bought. Um, okay. But this is what we were giving away last week was the- heart and hand we santa for 2021 and the winner of we santa is susan dubay so congratulations susan hey. i think we already have your address so i'll probably just make sure we I, have it i really want to get 2020 though he is cute he's, probably, the cutest, he's probably the cutest thing about 2020 <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. and we 20. have a new giveaway this week i did i went all out this week but i went to get my fabric and my flosses I picked up the blue flower gather with joy really cute so we decided to use the word gather and that's a good yeah. word I think as we headed towards Thanksgiving yeah. Thanksgiving gather with joy and this is kind of could be Thanksgiving or just any other time yeah and I love her pattern yeah. they're just DMC they're it's nice a lot of stitchy. it's a lot of stitching it's a cute I'm one telling you right now <laughs> Splash the pattern. Yeah. Joy. That would be really cute on an entryway or something, wouldn't it? Isn't it? Like yeah. Hallway where you colors are beautiful. I don't know if you can really see the colors, but the oh yeah, that red is more reddish than I realized. Yeah, Let's see if I can try to get it to focus a little bit. But like all in here. Whoops. Here my finger. <laughs> all here. <laughs> is that a pumpkin at the bottom? The blue pumpkin? I think it is. That's really yeah. cute. It would be just nice. And here's like these are swirling leaves. Yeah. These are berries. It really is a beautiful pattern. So yeah, use the word gather. And she also included in her little thing. This is a sticker. I think it is, might might be a sticker. Like a project completion card. So it has wrought by chart name designer completed in notes. Yep. So I've I'll let you have that too. I'm going to stick it right in there. So use the word gather in your comment below and you'll be entered to win that next week. Yeah. And I am all caught up in my mail out. So hopefully if you haven't gotten anything that you've been waiting for from me, it should be coming. I think I had, a. I told Sarah, I think I had a couple of ones that had to go to Canada. So they might take a little bit longer, but hopefully everything's winging its way to where it needs to go. And if you're waiting for something from me. So that would be Teresa and Sharon and Shelly. Nope, not Shelly. Sorry, I read the name wrong. Sheila. Sheila, Sharon, and Teresa. I'm a little behind. I'll try to go this week. I'll try to get those out. Yes. This week is birthday party mode for us. It's her party next weekend? Yeah. And I'm kind of a, like, I'd like to think I'm a low key party mom, but I'm kind of not like, because it's really special. It's a special time of year. Yeah. So we're having a little birthday party. She wanted to do slumber party, but they're kind of going the way of the past. 
We don't really do them, but I was willing to try to host one if we were the only ones who don't really typically do slumber parties. Uh-huh. And as I was talking to other moms, they were like, I'm sorry, we just don't really do slumber parties. I was like, perfect. Cause I had told her, this is Liddy's 12. I had told her if, if we can't do a slumber party, we'll do a late night party. And it works out perfectly. Like I think everybody <laughs> pretty much excited is able to come except for a couple of little girl, like a sister pair who are out of town. So I think we're going to have like, that's kind of cool. Yeah. So we're going to have personal pizzas. We'll just make dough and they can each make and top their own with special toppings. Uh-huh. And we're going to do Italian sodas to uh-huh. go with dinner. We're going to play Twister and maybe another party game or two. Uh-huh. I think we're going to puffy paint or something t-shirts. Uh-huh. For each girl, they can paint their very, own, decorate their own very preteen, very preteen. Watch a movie and have popcorn are my goals right there. And then, Gosh. I know, oh, believe me, I know. How is it she's possible? She's acting like a 12-year-old this week. I know, but she's I know. my little girl, my little lady. Be a teenager next year. Ugh, that's crazy. I, your mouth. I know, I know. She's very excited to have this little party. She has, we've had a lot of birthday parties, but before this, we often have like just all the siblings, you know, we'll just invite some friends with all the siblings. We'll just come have. Yeah. But I, I knew that when she was leaning towards 12, I was like, let's, you know, is there anybody you want to, and she has a lot of little friends this year from our co-op and from ballet. Yeah. And a She's so, your social butterfly anyway. She is my social butterfly. Yeah. So she is very excited. She really wants to go to party city this week. We did that one year uh-huh. to prep for her party. And ever since she wants to go every year to buy little like trinkets and favors. And I don't know what else, like a special mom and daughter thing that she wants to Plates do. Plates and napkins. And yeah. Yeah. Whatever else. <laughs> so my stitching time might be a little less than I feel like, cause I'll be. Yeah. Birthdays. I, I get what you say though. You think, oh, I got this under control. And then they just kind of become, they're just a lot. But yeah. like I said, it's a special one. And this is <clears throat> It's not 13, but 12 is definitely, <clears throat> 12 is the new 13. <laughs> yeah, it I think it'll be fun. She wants an ice cream cake from Dairy Queen. Those are kind they of still, expensive. They so still do them? Yeah, they do. Oh. Not the same, not like the log ones, but they'll not have the log ones. Yeah. But they're like not cheap, but for a birthday party, it'll be fine. Costco yeah. cakes are a little cheaper in the long run, but. Costco? Mm-hmm. But they're gigantic, so I don't really need it. Not ice cream cake, though. I wonder if they actually make ice cream cakes. I should look in there. I don't think actually, they do. Probably not. I think they just have baked cakes. And I heard that during 2020, they got rid of their half sheet cakes. They only do the mm-hmm. full sheet cakes. But that maybe changed. I oh, haven't even looked into it. Other big disappointing news, by the way. <laughs> oh, good. In case I you all are it. wondering, first of all, I told Sarah this before. I just needed to buy some Sudafed for my stuffed up nose yesterday. That's always a drama. I hate going in to buy Sudafed because it's over. The, you got to sign your firstborn away to get it. <laughs> but not only did I go into the store to try to get some yesterday because I was totally out, their system for tracking you to buy Sudafed was down. <laughs> so I had to go bum some off my kids. But I also went to Starbucks because I really wanted to get a Starbucks eggnog latte. They're not doing eggnog this year. Why? It's not a big seller. This wasn't a big seller for them. <laughs> what yeah, that's what Cassidy and Andrew said when I told them I said like everybody is waiting for eggnog lattes that's like the thing apparently so what are I they think doing it's... chocolate bomb syrup mochas <sighs> with peppermint drizzled on you top know, this is what kills me they always have like you know like gingerbread caramel blah 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 uh, my tongue's brown from my tea um or they'll have you know just other yeah s'more I don't think they have a s'mores one but you know what I mean like yeah there's peppermint I'll get a peppermint mocha yeah but once in a while I really want eggnog and I'm gonna have to make it myself at home every morning because that's crazy I think the the other day said you haven't bought any eggnog yet and I was like well I haven't really been anywhere that's selling it because I didn't go to Costco last week Winco probably has it in yeah I actually didn't go to Winco last week either I just went through my little grocery outlet (laughs) They might but not ever get it I'll in. I'll probably have to go. They might end up with some eventually, but I'll get it at Costco. I'll probably stop in at Costco this week and get see if they have any. And God forbid they don't have any. Well, I've been buying it at QFC, which is a Kroger. And your dad wanted, I buy the light for me and he wants the regular full fat stuff. But then 
<laughs> so this, this makes me laugh. Because about three weeks ago, no, maybe about a month ago, he's, I said, I'm, I'm grocery shopping. Do you need me to get you any soda? Because I drink diet and he doesn't drink diet soda. He goes, yeah, just give me some regular 7-Up. So he's been, and I kind of have been drinking diet 7-Up once in a while, just as a change, just kind of light and refreshing. So I bought 7-Up and, um, and then I've been buying eggnog. Well, I guess, okay, first of all, when Andrew and Cassidy were driving here to our house yesterday with baby Junie, because he had to fly out on a business trip today <laughs> and we live by the airport. Um, I got this text message from Cassidy quoting Andrew. I, I hope my mom is so happy to see us that she made Chex Mix for when we get there. <laughs> so Did you that was a no. Chex Mix? <laughs> I, but he's like, it's the holiday was, season, people. Why isn't there Chex Mix perpetually coming out of that kitchen? <laughs> previously during the week, we had been talking, oh, they had given baby Junie some little cucumber spears. And so they were showing me a video and Andrew goes, do you know what the best cucumbers are? And he, he was on this FaceTime call and I'm like, no, tell me. And he goes, those Persian pickles from uh, Persian cucumbers from Trader Joe's. They're like, they come in a pack and they're about this long and about this big around. Hmm. And so I had gone to Trader Joe's and I saw them. I thought, oh, I'll give these a try. So they were in the refrigerator. So after she texted me that he was hoping that <laughs> Anyway, he'd been going on and on about these cucumbers. And she goes, I've been with this guy for how many years? I had no idea. He felt so strongly about his cucumbers. So I get to Trader Joe's. I hear my ring go off on my phone. So I knew they had arrived. So I called her. I said, you know, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. There's no Chex Mix. But there is some Persian cucumbers in the fridge if he wants one. And she started laughing. But then apparently when they did come in, they, so there's this joke amongst moms of my age that when your kids grow up and leave when they come home they scrounge around in your pantries and in your fridge and it is no joke every one of my kids does it including that one so, I don't anymore I did though when we were first married yeah yeah anyway so apparently he walked into the laundry room and saw the seven up <laughs> like oh yay dad's got seven up and then a little bit later, they opened the fridge and there was eggnog. Because have you, it, I don't know about other people in other parts of the country or world, but seven up and eggnog is a punch that people have made for years. I don't think it's good. I don't like it. Well, I like it. I don't, well, drink I don't it think I drink. like it. Yeah, I but he was very excited. I'd rather just drink eggnog. Oh, no. I, he was able to make his eggnog punch. Yeah, in a cup. I can't drink straight eggnog. I like it oh. with something else. But I, I usually like add eggnog. ice cream to that. It's like eggnog, seven oh. up, and ice cream if you make it in the punch bowl. So he was very excited to see. Yeah, I feel like I grew up drinking. Is that something I've made it a couple of times, but you probably don't remember it. Like at the holidays. I remember her cider and stuff more. And yeah. you were probably yet yeah, probably pretty young when she did it. Anyway, so he was very happy guy because he got to have his eggnog and seven up. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, now so if I, I scrounge around, I'm usually looking for something for the girls. <laughs> yeah. I know. That's true. That's true. I need to get now my... I can afford to buy my own snacks, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't used to when we were first married. It was like I didn't buy soda, I didn't buy anything. I know. And <laughs> now I just make it work. Probably I, not always can afford it, but I make it work. I had a friend who lived in her house across the street from where her adult son worked. He worked for the water district. <laughs> and so he would show up, go to work and she worked for Boeing. So she'd be gone during the day, but he had a key to the house. He's a married man. He's got three <laughs> kids. He would swing by her house when she was at work and make himself <laughs> lunch. Out of her stuff. <laughs> and she finally told him, look, you can use anything that's already open, but if you find something that's not open, you may not open it. <laughs> How about pack your own lunch, dude? <laughs> You're 30 something years old. I don't know if you still that. It doesn't work. I don't know who this is. <laughs> tell tell me later. later. <laughs> tell me later. I was just like, okay, I could, I could see one of my kids maybe doing that. <laughs> oh, man. oh, man. That's funny. I know. It's kind of the equivalent of people stealing people's lunches out of the office refrigerator, which blows my mind when I hear people talk about that. I know. I can't even fathom being that. Who would do that? I don't know. Anyway. So crazy. Well, well that's about all we got. No, my light is fading here. 
Yeah. Oh, it is getting dark. Well, it is daylight. We also yeah. fell back an hour. So now. Did you know that Jesse was telling me that like, I forget how many, many, many states have voted to do away with daylight savings time. Congress has just not passed it. No. In fact, Heck. here's the deal. I read an article. The entire Pacific time zone has all voted. We would become mountain time, basically. And I read an article about it on Como, or one of our news pages. There's two things. They can either have Congress amend the Save the Daylight Act that was passed in 1966 or something like that. Okay, amend or, it. Easy. Or the, the dude that's in charge of some committee, I think it's Pete Buttigieg. Pete Buttigieg, who's a senator, is in charge of this one committee. All he would have to do is sign it. Why? Why? Just sign and it. We voted on this in 2019. I know. I'm and I'm like Pete Buttigieg. I'm be like, uh, sign. That. I'm gonna call his office and be like, sign that. We're done. I think he's in Georgia. Yeah, but, I can call his office in Georgia. You know, I, I just think it's time. This is ridiculous. There's no earthly reason why we need to be doing this bouncing back and forth an hour, especially when we've gone through all the hoops for the state legislature yes. to vote on it, and they've all voted. Yes, here's the deal. It. If we had voted to stay on what we just turned to, which is standard time. We wouldn't have needed Congress's approval. Why didn't we just do that then? <laughs> because everybody wants to stay on daylight savings time, even though it doesn't really matter. I don't want to stay on daylight savings time. It's just time. Like, just give us something regular. The thing is, is that you're going to have more daylight. Well, no, because you're still moving with the solstice. It's still going to get dark early. I know. <laughs> and uh, people think they want more daylight in the afternoon. I would rather, I'd, I'd probably rather have it the other way around. But if you leave it the other way, like, okay, so now we're going to have early, we're going to have daylight a little bit longer in the mornings, but eventually that goes away too, because we get to the longest day of the year. I know. So it doesn't really I'd rather have it be light in the morning when I need to wake up and get moving on the day. Yeah. And then, okay, if it's darker earlier. Which is what you're going mean, to have now, right now, you're going to have that. It's going to be lighter tomorrow morning. Right. Morning. But I, No. Guess what would will. be the opposite? I fell uh -huh. back. Oh, okay. Then I guess I want it this way. Okay. Right. I guess I want to stay daylight. Same. Right. But if they had done it and kept us the way. It would be forward, darker in the morning, but. and It'll be lighter in the morning for a little while, but eventually it's going to be dark in the morning too, because we're marching towards the, the yeah. winter solstice, but it's going to be darker earlier in the afternoon. But I figure what does <laughs> it really matter if it's dark at five, it's the middle of winter. You're not going to be out gardening in the west coast gardening is done now i know what are you it is hard today? to have it be dark in the evening early but i don't i do I because well i mean kids can't play outside as long like i know but i figure at least where i live people aren't playing outside anyway it's it's mm -hmm. rainy it's yucky it, people i just figure and adults are working so I don't know. I, I don't care. I wish they would just settle on something. I know. I'd be fine if they just make up their mind and then we just don't yeah. change all the time. I actually, really even don't. though we, this going back like this, what we fall back, you think, oh, that's okay. This won't be as bad as losing an hour, but you know, it doesn't matter. It still messes me up. I'll be dragging my wagon by Wednesday. It's like, it messes up your circadian rhythms yeah. and doesn't matter how early you go to bed or how it, it changes everything. And so it takes you a time. And there's studies that show there's higher incidence of strokes every time we do this, higher incidence of car accidents, mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of things for putting an end to this. And they're just thinking around. I don't know. Thinking around. <laughs> Stop thinking around, Congress. I know. So anyway. I have an opinion yeah. here. <laughs> Can you tell we feel very passionate about our weather and our time? <laughs> <laughs> we must be from Washington. Washingtonians complain a lot about weather, by the way. If you haven't noticed, especially people on the other side of the mountain. I, don't really about about it. It. I mean, I don't mind it when it's like this if I don't have to be out in it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not one that has the whole sad disorder thing. Yeah. Some people do. And I do you know. struggle in the winter more. So, I mean, I have to say, there was a week a couple of weeks ago where, and it's probably going to be this way this week too, where it is just gray. Yeah. And if it's, if it's not raining, it's just gray. Yeah. That it does get a little old after five or six days. You kind of want a little sun break and then people feel a lot better and you feel like, you know, you can go on again, but um, snow in the past is too. I know they actually closed highway 410 already. 
Did they really? Also, not as many people, more snow related delays because they are short staffed. Yeah. I read a whole yeah. article about that yesterday. Just talking about how. <laughs> No, and there's no, they cut the funding for snow removal over the past. And because of COVID, people quit and I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. so the world is cheery. Happy holidays. <laughs> Happy holidays too. We're listening to lots of Christmas music here to keep our spirits mm -hmm. up. And yeah. I wanted to order something for the girls for Christmas and Sarah just looked it up online and it's not going to ship till December 31st. So guess what? Plan B. Yeah. Shipping. No, no. It's crazy right now. It's crazy. It's a crazy world. So gather with your loved ones, leave the word gather in our comments yeah. down below. Because we've got, we do, you know, we're joking about this, but we do have a lot to be thankful for. Yeah. Maybe. And it, this is just petty stuff, but just kind of the little annoyances that sometimes wear you down a little bit. I'm but. tired of being told, I'm tired of being told to be patient. <laughs> Everywhere you go. Please it's wearing my patience down. They're always telling me to be patient. Hey, guess what? I went to, we went to a restaurant on Friday mm -hmm. here in our county. I had to show our vaccination card. Mm -hmm. it's the first time we've been out since that went into place. Yeah, we don't have I it. Care. I mean, here, look at it. They barely looked at it. They just had to yeah. go through the motions. I mean, I suppose if I didn't have one, they'd have to say you can't come in, but probably. I, I don't know. Huh? Yeah, probably. I walked in. It's a, it's a little Mexican restaurant called the Five Hermanos. And they, and I think it really is like five brothers that own it or something. And they are a hoot and a half, these guys. And they know us because we go in there with our friends all the time. And they're always joking with us. So <clears throat> my husband had already walked in and his, and our friends that we were meeting had already walked in, but I was out in the car on a phone call and I went in after him and I would, walked in and the guy standing there at the counter and I, I had it in my hand. I go, do you have to see this? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> you know, but I'm not going to give you grief, dude. You're just trying to make a living. Yeah, you're just. Oh, you didn't make this rule. <laughs> so, okay, they were busy. It didn't. Uh, they were very busy. Uh, clearly, people weren't having a problem with this. I think there's been all this dire prediction that people aren't going to go out to eat anymore. I'm like, hey, I feel pretty good about being in here. Everybody in here is vaccinated. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know. Suddenly have an audience. I guess I'm game. I guess there's a, maybe a request for me to end. Is it your adult audience? No, no, there's just a of people. No, we're just, we're just ending here. Okay. Okay, well, happy to see you.